What is going on, everyone? Back again with another video. In today's video, obviously, it's a terrible day for MLB. I don't know what is going on here. It is atrocious right now. As from the time in the corner, it is 4:45 as I'm recording this little video. The deadline is about in 15 minutes, but it sounds like where it's done, it's done. There's no deal. Sounds like nothing's gonna happen. As you see on your screen right here, from Jeff, the goat, he pretty much just said that the players are not gonna accept MLB's final proposal. And you know, the the deadline that they that they delayed from yesterday, it was now five. So. I don't know. We'll see if MLB is going to cancel, uh, you know, this opening day on uh, the March 31st. We'll see what happens with that one. But yeah, it's kind of sad news. But like we'll see right here, you know, I think the MLBPA is actually doing a good job on this. Like we get from Ryan Lewis right here. MLB, pay, MLB puts on the lockout, excuse me. They wait 40 days to make their first offer, which is half of the lockout so far. They set up all the, uh, you know, they set up the deadlines and stuff for opening day like we have right now. And then, you know, they either say the, the MLB PDA is changing up and stuff, all like that. So, I mean, don't give them what they want. You're just going to keep losing money from the owner's side. So I guess that's what's going on right now. Probably Manfred is supposed to talk in about half an hour. So it looks like right about five, he's supposed to talk. Maybe like five, like five ten on MLB, um, maybe on MLB network. I'm not really sure where he's supposed to talk, but he's supposed to say something soon. So we might have that at the end of the video. Uh, you know, if we could find that somewhere, you know, I, I'd be like to see what he's saying, which that might mean he might cancel the season. We'll wait and see on that one. But and then once again, we'll finish off with more, uh, you know, baseball stuff. This is what Scuffy says. I really like his takes on a lot of these things. But with MLB expected to be delayed a month or so, now the MLB show is pushing more into esports. It'd be a great opportunity to get a little league going with the best players in the game, like they did with the Players League. The Players League was fun to watch during COVID. I'll be honest, I really liked the Players League when they did that. That'd be something cool if they brought it back. Uh, the players league um that would be sick if they brought that back or yeah like they said pushing more in esports maybe have a little spring invitational instead of waiting till like summer you know do a little spring summer fall winter kind of deal this year and maybe get the players league back that would be pretty sick as well but uh yeah this is all kind of the news going on i'm, I'm really excited to see if he's gonna say anything on you know the whole you know pushing the season back obviously and i i can't agree more with ryan lewis on this one especially his second point like they took 40 days to make one offer which is half the arbitration time i'm pretty sure today is day like 81 or something or 82 or 80 or somewhere around there so far the parties have failed to achieve their mutual goal of reaching an agreement the unfortunate thing maybe the most unfortunate thing is that agreement the one we've offered to our players had offered huge benefits for our fans and for our players. We have listened to the Players Association throughout the process. A primary goal of the Players Association has been to increase pay for younger players. I said in Orlando, and I'll say it again, we agree and share that goal. We offered to raise the minimum salary to $700,000 an increase of $130,000 from last year. We offered to create an annual bonus pool of $30 million for our very best young players. In total, we're offering nearly a 33% raise to almost two thirds of major league players. And we're adding more than $100 million annually in additional compensation for this younger player group. The proposal also addressed player and fan concerns about issues like service time and competition. Baseball would for the first time have a draft lottery, the most aggressive lottery in professional sports. Also, for the first time ever, we agreed to an incentive system to encourage clubs to promote top prospects on opening day. We also proposed that the first and second place finishers in rookie of the year voting in each league would receive a full year of service no matter how long they were in the major leagues. The MLBPA asked us to make free agency more robust. For the first time ever, we agreed to eliminate draft pick compensation, a change that the MLBPA has sought for decades. On the competitive balance tax, we offered a significantly larger first year increase than in the last two agreements, bearing in mind that the competitive balance tax is the only mechanism in our agreement that protects some semblance of a level playing field among the clubs. 
the international draft would have more fairly allocated talent among the clubs and reduced abuses in some international markets. We also listened to our fans. The expanded playoffs would bring the excitement of meaningful September baseball and postseason baseball to fans in more markets. While we preferred the 14 team format, when the format became a significant obstacle, we listened to the players' concerns and offered a compromise by accepting the 12 team format. Finally, we offered a procedural agreement that would allow for the timely implementation of sorely needed rules like the pitch timer and the elimination of shifts to improve the entertainment value of the game on the field. And we agreed to the universal DH. So what's next? The calendar dictates that we're not going to be able to play the first two series of the regular season and those games are officially canceled. We're prepared to continue negotiations. We've been informed that the MLBPA is headed back to New York, meaning that no agreement is possible until at least Thursday. As such, camps could not meaningfully operate until at least March 8th, leaving only 23 days before the scheduled opening day. The clubs and our owners fully understand just how important it is to our millions of fans that we get the game on the field as soon as possible. To that end, we want a bargain and we want an agreement with the Players Association as quickly as possible. So as we just saw, there was no deal from today. Rob Manfred did just speak. And he said a couple of interesting things, the concern of our fans that are top you know, of our consideration list. And there was no deal today. That's one of Jeff's tweets. We're just going to go through Jeff's tweets because you know, he is the man, the myth, the legend. He said they canceled the first two uh, series of the season. So I'd imagine that's about six games um, for the first two series of most team schedules. Like some, some teams might play like three, four. So depending on like what team it is. But all the teams have to play the same games anyway, so that doesn't really matter that much. But yeah, so that's pretty much what he said on the whole uh, thing. He said a couple other things, but uh, you know, really just about like negotiating and stuff. But yeah, that's all the things he said. If you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to like, subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Peace out, everyone.